All right, good morning, everyone. Really great to be with you today. It is August 31st. Can you believe it? It is the last day of August. And uh, yeah, we're jumping into Ezekiel chapter 37. And this is the uh, Valley of Dry Bones. Pretty awesome scripture here. And we'll go back into Ezekiel and uh, let, listen to what it says. Um, it says, the Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. And he led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor, and they were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. And then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become alive or living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know that answer to that. And then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. And this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to... I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh on the muscles and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I <clears throat> am the Lord. Sometimes, just real, pause here for a moment. Uh, sometimes that is what the what, what the work of God is, right? It's looking around us and we're seeing you know, dry bones, seeing people whose lives have just kind of dried up right they've dried up spiritually they've dried up emotionally mentally and they are just worn out and the awesome thing is the gospel message that we proclaim to people we're calling out to people who have dry bones dead skeletons dead on the inside dead all around them and uh and it's awesome this prophetic message that it's like lord can 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 you bring these back to life I mean, the lord says to him you know to ezekiel can can the lord can these dry bones live again <laughs> and Ezekiel says, Lord, only you know. You know, only you know. And uh, that's when the Lord says, yeah, they can. They can. And that's what he's speaking. He's speaking this, obviously, to Israel. He's speaking this reality of, I can bring you to life again. And I love this reality because God is speaking it to over. He speaks that. He speaks life over us, you and me, and says, I can bring life over you again. Where, there's, where you've dried up spiritually, I can bring life in you again. Isn't that good? That's good news. Because we go through seasons at times where we get kind of dried up, don't we? Even after coming to know the Lord, we we can go through seasons. And the Lord says, you know, I can I can bring those dry bones back to life again. Okay, so it says, so I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. And the bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. And then as I watched muscles and Flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. And then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. And they all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. And then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying... We have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. I love that 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 song that we sing, Dry Bones. I believe it's an elevation song. You know, dry Bones, hear the word of the Lord. You know, live, live. Dry Bones, hear the word of the Lord, live. And uh, man, what a message to proclaim. What a message to receive, right? What a message to proclaim to other people around us. Dry Bones, hear the word of the Lord, live. Praise God. Um, God's able to do it. Ezekiel 37, 15, again, a message came to me from the Lord, son of man, take a piece of wood and carve it, carve on it these words. This represents Judah and all its allied tribes. Then take another piece and carve these words on it. This represents Ephraim and the northern tribes of Israel. Now hold them together in your hand as if they were one piece of wood. And when your people ask you what your actions mean, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will take Ephraim and the northern tribes and join them to Judah. I will make them one piece of wood in my land, my hand. 
and then hold out the pieces of wood you have inscribed so the people can see them and give them this message from the sovereign Lord. I will gather the people of Israel from among the nations. I will bring them home to their own land from the places where they have been scattered. I will unify them into one nation on the mountains of Israel. One king will rule, rule them all. No longer will they be divided into two nations or into two kingdoms. They will never again pollute themselves with their idols and vile images and rebellion, for I will save them from their sinful backsliding. I will cleanse them. They will truly be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David, my servant David will be their king. And they will have one, only one shepherd. Okay, now, now how is this possible when he's speaking to a people who David's dead? Right. King David's long gone. Right. They've had many, many kings. It's been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years since King David lived. What's he saying here? He's saying the Messiah that was promised through the line of King David. That's what he's saying. King David, King David, uh, the, the one who's coming out of the tribe of David is going to be is going to be their leader. And, and they're not going to be divided anymore. It's going to be one nation. Right. It's going to be one people, one people. OK. Uh, they will live in the land and I, that I gave my servant Jacob, the land where their ancestors lived. They and their children and their grandchildren after them will live there forever, generation after generation. And my servant David will be their prince forever, prince of peace, right? And I will make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. I will give them their land and increase their numbers and I will put my temple among them forever. I will make my home among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. And when my temple is among them forever, the nations will know that I am the Lord who makes Israel holy. Okay, Ezekiel 38. This is another message that came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn and face Gog on, of the land of Magog, the prince who rules over the nations of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord. Gog, I am your enemy. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws to lead you out with your whole army, your horses and charioteers, in full armor and a great horde um, armed with shields and swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya will join you too with all their weapons. Gomer and all its armies will also join you along with the armies of Beth Togomara from the distant north and many others. Get ready, be prepared, keep all the armies around you mobilized and take command of them. A long time from now you will be called into action. In the distant future you will swoop down on the land of Israel which will be enjoying Peace after recovering from war and after its people have returned from many lands to the mountains of Israel. You and all your allies, a vast and awesome army, will roll down on them like a storm and cover the land like a cloud. And this is what the Sovereign Lord says. At that time, evil thoughts will come to your mind and you will devise a wicked scheme. You will say Israel is an unprotected land filled with, the, with unwalled villages. I will march against her and destroy these people who live in such confidence. I will, go, I will go to those formerly desolate cities that are now filled with people who have returned from exile in many nations. I will capture vast amounts of plunder for the people are rich with livestock and other possessions now. They think the whole world revolves around them. But Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish will ask, do you really think the armies you have gathered can rob them of silver and gold? Do you think you can drive away their livestock and seize their goods and carry off plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy against God. Give him this message from the Sovereign Lord. When my people are living in peace in their land, then you will rouse yourself. You will come from your homeland in the distant north with your vast cavalry and mighty army, and you will attack my people Israel, covering their land like a cloud. At that time in the distant future, I will, I will bring you against my land as everyone watches, and my holiness will be displayed by what happens to you, Gog. Then all the nations will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord asks. Are you the one I was talking about long ago when I announced through Israel's prophets that in the future I would bring you against my people? But this is what the Sovereign Lord says. When Gog invades the land of Israel, my fury will boil over. In my jealousy and blazing anger, I promise a mighty shaking in the land of Israel that day. All living things, the fish in the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people on the earth will quake in terror at my presence. Mountains will be thrown down, cliffs will crumble, walls will fall to, to the earth. I will summon the sword against you on the, on the hills, on, you, on all the hills of Israel, says the Sovereign Lord. Your men will turn their swords against each other. I will punish you and your armies with disease 
and bloodshed. I will send torrential rain, hailstones, fire, and burning sulfur. In this way, I will show you my greatness and holiness, and I will make myself known to all the nations of the world. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Okay, Ezekiel 39. Son of man, prophesy against Gog. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord. I am your enemy, O Gog, ruler of the nations of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around and drive you toward the mountains of Israel, bringing you from the distant north. I will knock the bow from your left hand and the arrows from your right hand, and I will leave you helpless. You and your army and your allies will all die on the mountains. I will feed you to the vultures and, and wild animals. You will fall in the open fields, for I have spoken, says the sovereign Lord. And I will rain down fire on Magog and all your enemy allies who live safely on the coasts. Then they will know that I am the Lord. In this way, I will make known my holy name among my people of Israel. I will not let anyone bring shame on it, and the nations too will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. That day of judgment will come, says the Sovereign Lord. Everything will happen just as I have declared it. Then the people in the towns of Israel will go out and pick up your small and large shields, bows and arrows, javelins and spears, and they will use them for, for fuel. There will be enough to last them for seven years. They won't need to cut wood from the fields or forests, for these weapons will give them all the fuel they need. They will plunder those who planned to plunder them, and they will rob those who planned to rob them, says the Sovereign Lord. And I will make a vast graveyard for Gog and his hordes in the valley of the travelers east of the Dead Sea. It will block the way of those who travel there, and they will change the name of the place to the valley of Gog, Gog's hordes. It will take seven months for the people of Israel to bury the bodies and cleanse, cleanse the land. Everyone in Israel will help, for it will be a glorious victory for Israel when I demonstrate my glory on that day, says the Sovereign Lord. After seven months, teams of men will be appointed to search the land for skeletons to bury so the land will be made clean again. Whenever bones are found, a marker will be set up so the burial crews will take them to be buried in the Valley of Gog's hordes. There will be a town there named Himanon, Hemona, excuse me, which means horde, and so the land will finally be cleansed. And now, son of man, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Call all the birds and wild animals. Say to them, gather together for my great sacrificial feast. Come from far and near to the mountains of Israel, and there eat flesh and drink blood. Eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of princes as though they were rams, lambs, goats, and bulls, all fattened animals from Bashan. Gorge yourselves with flesh until you are glutted, drink blood, until you are drunk, this is the sacrificial feast I have prepared for you. Feast at my banquet table. Feast on horses and charioteers, on mighty men and all kinds of valiant warriors, says the Sovereign Lord. In this way I will demonstrate my glory to the nations. Everyone will see the punishment I have inflicted on them and the power of my fist I will, when I strike. And from that time on, the people of Israel will know that I am the Lord, their God. The nations will then know why Israel was sent away to exile. It was punishment for sin for they were unfaithful to their God. Therefore I turned away from them and let their enemies destroy them. I turned my face away and punished them because of their defilement and their sins. Ezekiel 39, 25. So now this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will end the captivity of my people. I will have mercy on all Israel, for I jealously guard my holy reputation. They will accept responsibility for their past shame and unfaithfulness. After they come home to live in peace in their own land with no one to bother them. When I bring them home from the lands of their enemies, I will display my holiness among them for all the nations to see. And then my people will know that I am the Lord, their God, because I sent them away to exile and brought them home again. I will leave none of my people behind, and I will never again turn my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit upon the people of Israel. I, the Lord, have spoken. Uh, do you remember when the Lord poured his spirit out on his people? You know, early in the book of Acts, Pentecost. The Lord has done this. He's poured out his spirit on his people. And the Lord has been good. He's been faithful. He's done what he said he would do. Okay? Jesus is the culmination. All these prophecies pointing to Jesus coming and, 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 you know, and bringing um, restoration and peace to, to Israel and to the entire world. And then it opens up to not just Israel, but to the people of God, those people who are faith, who have faith, those people who aren't just circumcised by hand. Now, just remember, because this is what the scripture clearly teaches, this reality that, you know, this is not about being circumcised, because that was the sign, right, that there were Jewish people, that they were circumcised. The people of Abraham, they were circumcised on the eighth day, 
by the eighth day. Okay, they were circumcised, and that showed that they were the covenant people of God. Now, God says, again, he says, I will circumcise you, I will circumcise your heart. Not, not, a, not with hands, but with the spirit. Okay, and so, so again, a lot of people get want to want to get caught up in these. And, and historically, you can you can turn the, the the calendar back. And a lot of people want to make you know this reality of Gog and Magog, and they want to make it futuristic and and not necessarily see. I mean, it's kind of debatable. Some people believe that well, these things were already fulfilled. Okay, they were already fulfilled in this you know this great passing off of you know the destruction of the nations around them you know from from you know the um all the way through from uh you know babylon uh, assyria babylon uh persia uh alexander the great with the with the greeks and then the romans and and um, then after that the breaking up of the the roman empire and jesus has come onto the scene and you know then brought the gospel and and now um, we see the people of God, you know, Jesus, Jesus, um, Jesus, the son of David, right? Okay. In the line of David reigns now eternally as, as the savior, as both savior and Lord. And, uh, and so it, it's all of those things are fulfilled in Jesus. Okay. And, and so, so now we are waiting for the return of, of the king re return of Jesus for and, and and now while we're waiting the people of God the children of God the new Israel has been called to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit God's people the the, the you know the this royal priesthood that's that's spoken of in the New Testament right it's what we recognize we we are the people of God and that this is, this is a revolutionary thought, you know, of, of like, this is what the scripture introduces to us, you know, and, and again, so what happens is people want to look at prophecy, like these prophecies outside of the historic context of what happened, but also outside of the reality of the redemptive work of Christ. This was all aiming towards Christ, towards Christ coming. And then now with Christ coming, we're awaiting his return as the church is the, the, the hands and the feet of Jesus doing the work of God, proclaiming the kingdom of God, making as many disciples as what will possibly come in. And God is now about to return. Christ is going to return and is going to judge the entire world, the living and the dead. He's going to come back. And in the church, we are going to meet him and we're going to come and we are going to and, and he is going to judge the world. Okay, and that's what the scripture teaches. This reality of what this is that's where we're what we're waiting on now is his return. And so right now the redemptive work of Christ is happening in this world. Okay. Uh, now jump to Ezekiel 32. We're going backwards. It says on March 3rd, during the twelfth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, this is Ezekiel 32. This message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, mourn for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and give him this message. You think of yourself as a strong young lion among the nations, but you're really just a sea monster. Uh, heaving around in your own rivers, stirring up mud with your feet. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will send my people, I will send many people to catch you in my net and haul you out of the water. I will leave you stranded on the land and die. All the birds of the heavens will land on you and the wild animals of the whole earth will gorge themselves on you. I will scatter your flesh on the hills and fill the valleys with your bones. I will drench the earth with your gushing blood all the way to the mountains, filling the ravines to the brim. When I blot you out, I will veil the heavens and the, and the darken the stars. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon will not give you its light. I will darken the bright stars overhead and cover your land in darkness. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. Okay, and I will disturb many hearts. When I bring news of your downfall to the distant nations you have never seen, yes, I will shock many lands and their kings will be terrified at your fate. They will shudder in fear for the li their lives as I brandish my sword before them on the day of your fall. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. The sword of the king of Babylon will come against you. I will destroy your hordes with the swords of mighty warriors and the terrors of the nations. They will shatter the pride of Egypt and all its hordes will be destroyed. I'll destroy your, all your flocks and herds that graze beside the streams. Never again will people or animals muddy those waters with their feet. Then I will let the waters of Egypt become calm again, and they will flow as smoothly as olive oil, says the Sovereign Lord. And when I destroy Egypt and strip you, every, you, strip you of everything you own, 
and strike down all your people, then you will know that I am the Lord. Yes, this is the funeral song. They will sing for Egypt. Let all the nations mourn. Let them mourn for Egypt and its hordes. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. So, so again, remember, Egypt is this vile, you know, this vile nation that has, you know, all of these false gods, many false gods that uh, that they uh, that they have um, really abhorrent worship practices and practicing, um, you know, it, in uh, like you know, again, sacrificing their children to the you know to the god of Molech and. You know the various all of these different gods god god is not going to share his glory with egypt and he's warned them over and over again and what happens is is you know he, he even in remember at jeremiah's time right he warned them if you go down there just remember babylon's coming i'm, I'm going to send babylon uh down uh to uh to, to destroy egypt and so you're all going to die anyway if you decide you're going to camp out in Egypt instead of going to Babylon like you should have, you know, surrendering to the king of Babylon like God told them to. And, and so this is this is a prophecy Ezekiel gives in saying to Egypt, you're going to be crushed at the hand, at the hand of Babylon. And that's exactly, again, histor history shows that this is what happens. Okay, so this is this is all of. This has been completed. This is done. They have been crushed. They were crushed by Babylon. Okay? So, so all of these things were happening. The, the prophets were speaking out against these nations, and that's what happens. The Babylonians come in. They crush them. Eventually what happens is the Persian kingdom then rises up, and they crush the Babylonians. Okay? And then the Persians end up falling, you know, and, and Alexander the Great comes and sweeps in and, uh, you know, just destroys everything, you know, and, uh, and you've got, and then and Rome rises up. And, and uh, you know, so you, you can see, we can, we can study history even and look back and see at how God fulfilled these, these promises um, of what was going to happen um, to these people. All right, and so we're, we're sitting now in this reality of, okay, the gospel has come, Jesus has come, and um, the yes, the Middle East is, is an absolute mess, but don't get caught up in that. Get caught up in the reality of what God has called the church right now across the world to be. You know, this... this this reality of, of, you know, God, you know, sent his son Jesus, who was born in the, in the, born in the line of King David, right? He is, he's the Messiah, the promised Messiah, the one who sits on the throne of David forever, right? As the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And, and he has empowered the church today to, to be his people, his chosen people in the same way that he chose in the Old Testament to you know to have this chosen people the Israelites so that they were be a family that the Messiah would come into, into place and now as the Messiah came into place and he opens up his salvation we discover in the New Testament when you read that oh this isn't just a Jewish thing this isn't just an Israel thing this is for the entire world and you read in the beginning of the book of Acts all the way up to about Acts chapter 13 you begin to discover that okay no this really is it's not a Jewish thing it's not an Israel thing we he is now the chosen people of God are those who have by faith received Christ and bowed their knees to him and and when we do that we recognize and realize we're the chosen people of God we are, we are, quote unquote, we're Israel. That's, that's what the scripture teaches. We've been, we've been given this incredible open opportunity to be his people, right? To be his people, like the, like in the Old Testament, the Israelites were his people. We, we are not, and it's now, now it's not a, a circumcision that shows that, we, you know, an, an external circumcision that shows that we are the people of God. No, we are now where our hearts are circumcised it's what we read yesterday that he changes our hearts he changes our lives and we are marked by him what by the holy spirit 
is given to us and now we are the people of God who go out in the power of God proclaiming his message being the people of God a people that are peculiar a people that are called out right Pe people that are we do not live as the rest of the world does so in the same way that like, like we're called out by God to be the people of God to represent him in this world to live in holiness to re represent him having been brought back to the Garden of Eden now in a relationship with God and living in purity and living in holiness and living as his people and, and and loving God and worshiping him and putting him first in all of our lives and this is what it means to be the people of God disciples who are out making disciples that's what God has called us to be is not incredible it's incredible to think about the the ramifications of of what it really means to to place our faith in Jesus and to be baptized into Christ and to be baptized into his life like his his death and his resurrection now we're resurrected to a new life friends this is just truly an incredible thing of what God has done and now we now we live as foreigners right surrounded by all these the nations that are opposed to God right we're surrounded and we we come in you know as as those who are like I'm Paul says like sheep who have been led to the slaughter but we know that his power reigns in us and will reign through us even as we are surrounded by the nations that do not honor God we can live as people who've been called the called out ones incredible Let's pray together. Lord, help us to live that way. Help us to live as the chosen people of God. Thank you, Lord, of what you've opened up for us. Help us, God, to be able to see and understand the big picture and understand the calling that you've placed on our lives. And Lord, we thank you, God, for uh, uh, you know just the, the incredible invitation that you've given to us uh, to be sons and daughters of God and to live as foreigners in this world. Um, our hope is in heaven. And Lord, help us to, to uh, just live as transformed people who have been changed by the mighty power of God, who have been marked by your spirit. And Lord, help us to live in the way, God, that you've called us to live. Help us to not be, help us to not make the mistake that the Israelites of the past made. Help us to not have our hearts turn towards the things of earth. Help us to not turn to idols and to worship them. God, help us to truly worship you and worship you alone and worship you first. And Lord, thank you, God, for the opportunity and the grace to be able to do that. And help us, Lord, to walk in faith, trusting in you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for uh, for joining me. And, uh, I, man, congratulations. Um, boy, we just finished up another month. And so, man, it's incredible. You think about it. September, October, November, December. We've only got four more months and we will have finished the entire Bible and, and have read through it chronologically. We are fast approaching, right? The, the, the messages have been given here. And I'm filling in the blanks for you so you can see where we're going because, because it's about Jesus, right? And, and it's coming really quickly here. We're going to get to the end here of the Old Testament and all these prophecies. And then we're going to see Jesus coming onto the scene. You know, in this moment when the, the Roman Empire has, has come in and, and has crushed all of these other nations, fulfilling these prophecies. The Roman nations come in and crush these other nations, um, crushing Babylon and crushing all of these other nations. And now Jesus, right, there's about 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament where all of those things happen and now and it sets the scene for jesus coming onto the scene the messiah being born of the virgin and now this miraculous work of god the fulfillment of all of these things that have been given it's incredible and so man, i'm looking forward to it but we're just really close the window is narrowing here as we move towards the messiah coming into into existence and we'll we'll, we'll walk ourselves from the old testament into the New Testament, and, and, and it's not two separate things. It's one big story, right, okay? That's, a lot of people see this as so like two stories. No, this is, this is one big story woven together. One theme through the entire thing, okay? One theme through the whole Bible, the theme of redemption. 
redeeming us from sin way back here in the garden when we fell and God bringing about what Ezekiel 36 spoke about like he this, this is the story of grace bringing us back into the garden a relationship with God through Jesus his son and the transformation of the heart that happens and and the hope of of eternity with with God uh, and so that it's incredible this one theme redemption through the whole thing okay and that's what we're going to see as we move all the way through and you're going to see this 10,000 foot view this picture of the entire Bible coming together it's not it's not confusing it's the whole Bible coming together in this one magnificent story about how God made a way for people to be redeemed to be his people the chosen people the holy the holy people of God and uh, and and so uh, man I just I can't wait to to finish this thing with you all right so we'll see you tomorrow I hope you have a really great day